So in this video, I'm going to provide a brief um, introduction and explanation of positioning options with CSS. All right, so before we begin, let's make sure we have an understanding of this document and why it looks the way that it does. Okay, so this is the HTML that produced this page. Um, this is the head, so nothing's printed on the page there. Um, note that some styling has already been defined inside the style tag, so that's some internal CSS, and uh, we'll play around with that in a minute. So the actual page content is defined here. So we have a paragraph, that's this, and then a div, which is this large red box, and then within it we have um, we have a, uh, a paragraph, and then another div, and then finally another paragraph. Um, to actually have the divs display with dimensions, even though they don't really contain anything, up here in the style, I set the height and the width for both of them. So th this uh, first div is assigned to the class div1, and it has it a fixed uh, width and height of 800 pixels, and the second div assigned to class div2 is has a set width and height of 300 pixels. And then I set a collar so that we can you know, see them. All right, so currently both of the divs are set to static, and this is the default. So actually if I remove these options from the CSS, it wouldn't really change anything because that they're taking on the static position by default. So when, when the position is set to static, objects will be displayed in the normal flow of the page. All right, so we have a paragraph followed by a div, that div contains a paragraph, another paragraph, and then the div in between. So that's just display within the normal flow of the page. All right, so next we're going to look at position absolute. So let's change this to absolute. And then we're going to actually have to define uh, some positioning arguments. So when we use position absolute, then the object is going to be displayed relative to its to its nearest positional ancestor. And in this case, there really isn't a positional ans ancestor, so it's just going to be displayed relative to the page or the body, so or the viewport, however you want to look at it. So know now that this box moved up to the top, um, so it's at uh, zero position top and then clear to the left, so zero. So it's effectively being positioned absolute relative to its nearest position or ancestor, which in this case is just the page. Okay, so now what we're going to do is change this to relative. So when you use relative, you're going to define it relative to its, um, relative to its static position. So, um, what we're going to do is set, um, let's see, let's do top, we'll just put 50 pixels, and then for left, we'll kick it over 150 pixels. So let's save that. Okay, so now this object has been moved over by 150 pixels, and it's 50 pixels lower than was supposed to, where it would be if it was defined statically. So in short, static is relative to its, um, its, uh, or sorry, relative is is in reference or to its static position. So you're basically offsetting it from its static position. Okay, and then there are a few other options. So um, let's look at fixed. So I'm going to change this to fixed, and. So now, let me make this a little smaller so we can scroll. So when you use fix, the object doesn't move along with the rest of the content. So it's at a fixed position on the page. In this case, it's been kicked over 150 pixels and then down 150 pixels. So if we set both of these at zero, it would, it would be fixed up in the upper left corner of the page. And then again, the page would just move 
relative to it. So you could use that, for example, if you wanted to have like a nav bar that would be stuck to the top of the page. And then st another option, and this is the final option, is sticky. And that basically just combines relative and um, fixed. So it'll move along with the page until a certain offset threshold is reached, and then it'll stick in place. Okay, so those are effectively your positioning options um, in CSS.